Folks, today we need to talk about why the HomePod failed. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech Tech, so honest it hurts. If this is your first time here, thank you for stopping by. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. Let's jump into it. I I'm your huckleberry. I had super high hopes for the HomePod when it was first announced. And I generally love Apple products. I even bought that iPod boombox thing back in the day, but I'm also a musician. Recording engineer music has been a big thing in my life. It matters to me a lot, and how it comes out of speakers matters to me a lot. I love the idea that was sort of pioneered with the Sonos system, and I've used Sonos products on and off for a bunch of years now, but the idea of an Apple-made hi-fi-ish wireless speaker was really attractive. I was very much excited about it. When it was announced, I envisioned putting four or five of them around the house, maybe having some in stereo and just rock out with the whole home audio Apple style, but a funny thing happened on the way to whole home audio nirvana via Apple. The HomePod was released. <laughs> And my whole home Apple dream was uh, crushed. The, Where's the beef? The HomePod failed for a lot of reasons, but in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about the three most at fault. Sound is a very subjective thing, and what sounds great to one person like myself might sound awful to another person or vice versa. My initial impressions of the HomePod soundstage was, a great overall sound, nice use of DSP software to bring in the illusion of room-filling audio, too much bass. <laughs> I would listen to that sound casually, but it would never replace a dedicated separate speaker system, you know, or any kind of real music application. The problem is, I think Apple wanted to replace that whole idea, the older idea of uh, two speakers and an amplifier. Maybe... To be fair, maybe they did it for some people, and I'll admit, from my vantage point when it comes to audio and, and audio products is not typical. It just didn't happen for me. The bass was a little too tubby for my taste, and that seemed to be inherent in the design, and I couldn't get the device EQ to my liking. I wanted the next step in the evolution of hi-fi, but and Apple has delivered that before, but sadly, not with the HomePod. Along those same lines, the features of the HomePod were incomplete. At launch and after launch, when those features were implemented, uh, they were not reliable. AirPlay 2 was a long time in coming, and when it came, it AirPlay 2 is great. It's a nice addition to not just the HomePod, but a lot of other things. Uh, it broadened the scope of the HomePod's potential, but what I had really been waiting for, the stereo pairing feature, was... Um, mess. When I tried it a month or so after the features were released, I had returned my initial purchase of a HomePod. And so when the stereo feature was announced and released, I went out and I got a couple more and I figured I'd give it a test and maybe this is what would put the HomePod over the top for me. But it was at best frustrating. It wasn't that I found it hard to set up. It was easy to set up or that it didn't sound good. It did sound pretty good, although it's still a little bit too commercial a sound for me, if that makes sense. The problem arose when the pairing of the two kept dropping off. The music would stop playing. And no matter what I tried to, to do or searched for on the internet, I couldn't get them to stay paired reliably enough to actually be able to enjoy listening to any music. One of the reasons Sonos has been so successful in the whole home audio game has a lot to do with the diversity of Sonos products and how well they just work. Remember that phrase? Just work. They now have speakers of just about every shape, size, and dedication. Uh, they have home theater stuff. They have outdoor stuff. They have in the wall stuff. They have all kinds of stuff. They didn't get there all at once, but over the past 10 years, Sonos has focused on bringing more and better experiences to the customer. In the two years since the HomePod was released, Apple has not delivered really anything to improve the ecosystem of the HomePod. I really thought that that ecosystem would be further along by now, and there are rumors that a smaller HomePod is coming soon, but 
I don't want a smaller HomePod. We don't need a smaller HomePod. The original HomePod isn't all that big in the first place. I want Apple to do things like tackle home theater integration with a HomePod, even if it will only work with Apple TV. I, I want that kind of functionality because that's where most people end up listening to their music. Their TV, their TV setup is the best sounding setup in their home. The problems with the HomePod go deeper than just that shaky start. Once you start using the HomePod, you realize how limited it is. If you want to use the full features of the HomePod, you pretty much have to stay within Apple's ecosystem. The things that Apple offers. Only Apple Music can be controlled by voice with the HomePod. And that, that just seems to me like, why? Yes, you can connect just about any app and any service via AirPlay 2, that works. But you can also get that kind of functionality in a much cheaper uh, speaker. And if you have an existing collection of music, let's say uh, records or anything like that, CDs, tapes, I don't know, the HomePod has no no ports whatsoever and no expandability whatsoever beyond the the janky stereo pairing it's an apple music machine with no real hope of ever being able to build on the system to expand it or to integrate other media you already own it it just assumes that everybody wants to use apple music only or apple wants you to do that and i think that's the wrong way to go there can be only one people who are serious about audio are pretty much the biggest group of consumers who would be willing to spend over two hundred dollars on a piece of audio gear and many of those people know you don't have to spend a ton to get sound that rivals or surpasses the HomePod. But staying in the smart speaker world, you can buy two Sonos Play 1s or Play SLs or whatever they're calling them now, uh, two of them for $50 less than what one HomePod costs. And those two Play 1s will pair together seamlessly in stereo and give you incredible sound uh, and it won't break. The average consumer is not a HomePod buyer. And I think that Apple has realized that now. That's why we're seeing the price drops that we've seen for the device and the talk about smaller devices or something like that. But I think if Apple wants to do audio, they have to do audio. They can't just do AirPods and AirPods Pro and a HomePod. They've, they've got to give people variety and choice. And that wouldn't really be all that bad if in the time since the HomePod was released, other companies hadn't taken the smart home ball and run circles around Apple and the HomePod. The Amazon Echo, which was not a great sounding device when it came out, now they have great sounding Echoes in the Echo Studio, and then they had the Echo Shows that have screens that are integrated that allow you to do things like see your your doorbell and all that kind of stuff. And you can control all of your lights and all your smart home stuff. And Google has a lot of the same things as well in their line. I guess, I guess they're calling their Nest devices now the, until they change again. And that is a very important distinction. Both Google and Amazon offer multiple devices at a ton of different price points. Pretty much all of them cheaper than the HomePod. And in the battle to occupy our bookshelves or kitchen counters, bedside tables, whatever, those two companies, while their devices might not be as nice as the HomePod, uh, have made that battle so one-sided that I don't see a way that Apple can ever be a real player in the smart speaker, smart home game. And that's the thing. After two years, it's clear that Apple didn't understand what they were getting into. The HomePod is a beautifully designed, halfway decent sounding, mostly dumb smart speaker from Apple that they decided to make even dumber by tying it only to Apple services and limited functionality and all that. I can envision a whole ecosystem of Apple audio related products that integrate into every nook and cranny of Apple users' lives, from screens to pods to varying sizes of speakers and everything else, home theater implementation, as I said before. The HomePod could have been the Vanguard product that opened the door for that hardware reality, but instead, it got stuck behind a bunch of other devices that did what it wants to do better and it wasn't smart enough to be useful in other ways to make people want to buy the HomePod instead. The HomePod failed. And make no mistake, it did fail because Apple wanted exclusivity 
and narrow use cases in a market where flexibility is king. There was great potential in the HomePod as well as great potential for other audio products. The AirPods are an example of how Apple can win at audio. But with each passing year that the HomePod just sort of sits there, that potential goes from nascent to completely unrealized. And it's kind of a shame, really. Apple's been tied to audio innovation for a long time, and it would be great to see them as a contender in home audio again. But the HomePod just didn't do it. And I wonder now if they'll ever have a chance to try again. Let me know what you think. I, did you buy a HomePod? Do you use a HomePod? Let me know down in the comments below. Did the HomePod fail or is it just, a, is it a success? Is it getting there? Talk down in the comments below. Thanks so much for being here. Once again, my name's Jason. So blah, 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 Tom's known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.